Hi friends, welcome to Science Smile Shorts. Here I present a stepwise method for the detection of Salmonella actually drawn from one of our regular samples in the laboratory. In the normal course, it is also necessary to test a positive Salmonella sample by the side, which is not shown here. The sample under test was found to be negative for Salmonella. In other words, Salmonella was not detected in the sample. I chose the media and the method as prescribed in Bacteriological Analytical Manual. Thank you. Here are a few lines on Salmonella. Salmonella is a pathogenic of microorganism belonging to the family Enterobacteriaceae. There are other genera in Enterobacteriaceae like Escherichia, Edwardsiella, Citrobacter, Shigella, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Hafnia, Serratia, Proteus, Ersenia, and Ervinia. There are many species in each genus of these organisms. Thus, more than 2,000 serotypes of Salmonella have been reported till now. Not all Enterobacteriaceae are pathogens, but all members of Salmonella are potentially pathogenic. Coming to the sources of Salmonella, all sources where human or animal contamination is possible, which includes water, feeds, rodents, insects, pets, and many more other sources including soil. Now briefly about control of Salmonella. Salmonella is sensitive to moderate heat with one or two exceptional species. It is sensitive to many disinfectants, sensitive to antibiotics and some chemicals sensitive to gases like ethylene oxide and propylene oxide, sensitive to gamma irradiation. The control of salmonella can be acquisition of salmonella free raw materials, hygienic processing and ideally a terminal treatment of the food to destroy any salmonella that may be present. Now let us get into the stage one of uh, testing method for the detection of salmonella. This is pre-enrichment stage. Here 25 grams of the product is suspended in 225 ml of sterile triptychase broth at 35 degrees for 24 hours. Sometimes the quantity of the material may be varying according to the product, the need and also the standards. It may be even 375 grams but it is proportionately suspended in the sterile triplicate broth for 24 hours. In this 24 hours, all the bacteria including salmonella, if there is any, multiply in this period. This is uh, stage 2, that is the enrichment stage. 1 ml of the suspension from stage 1, that is from the TSP broth is added to enrichment broth, that is tetrathionate broth and selenite cysteine broth separately as shown in the picture. The enrichment broth is incubated for 24 hours at 35 degrees. The selective medium allows mostly the Enterobacteriaceae and Salmonella to grow while suppressing other bacteria. Now we are in the stage 3, the isolation on selective plates. The contents of enrichment are streaked on selective plates with sterile loop and the plates are incubated for 24 hours at 35 degrees centigrade. The pictures on the left show the bismuth sulphide plates, xylose, lysine, 
deoxycholate XLD plates on the right. Now, further on examination of the plates. Bismuth sulphide plates, which are shown on the left, if there is any salmonella, it should give black colonies with metallic sheen. In fact, some species of proteus may also give black colonies due to hydrogen sulphide production. Now, in the XLD plates, salmonella should show red colonies with or without black centers, which are indicative. Both these BJ and XLD plates here show no suspected colonies with typical characteristics mentioned. Stage 4 is TSI reactions. The suspected colonies from the plates are inoculated in triple sugar iron and lysine iron agar separately. The picture on the left shows blank and on the right shows the bismuth sulphide and H.E. agar inoculations. Though there were no suspected colonies in both bismuth sulphide and H.E. agars, we in the routine course have carried out this test to have further confirmation. Now, what do we look in the TSI tubes? The picture shows TSI tubes from selenate cysteine to bismuth sulphide and selenate cysteine to XLD. We look for the color of the slant, the butt, the gas production and the hydrogen sulphide. Salmonella, if present, should give pink slant, yellow bath, gas or no gas, and mostly hydrogen sulphide. In the pictures, the slant is yellow, the butt is yellow, some gas positives there, and no hydrogen sulphide. The presence of salmonella is further ruled out. Likewise, we will examine the lysine iron agar tube reactions. Like TSA reactions, tests with LIA are carried out. The butt should become purple and black with hydrogen sulphide if salmonella is present. The picture shows no difference from the blank which is on the left in any of the tubes ruling out the presence of salmonella. The next stage is biochemical tests. There are a number of biochemical tests carried out on the cultures from the slant. The most important is urea test which differentiates between salmonella and false positive proteus. This picture shows a blank on the left. The other two are from the TSI cultures of bismuth sulphide and XLD, which turned pink because of presence of urease. The presence of urease confirms the presence of proteus and absence of salmonella. Thus, the product is free from salmonella or in other words salmonella is not detectable in the product. Now the final stage that is the stage 6. If suspected colonies are confirmed by biochemical tests as salmonella then the pure cultures are sent for serotyping. The serotyping is purely an immunological method of testing with known antisera of salmonella in 
antigen antibody interaction that is the principle however serotyping of a non salmonella culture may yield some false positives since some closely resembling non salmonella may show identical antigenicity hence the analysis of salmonella should be complete in all respects namely colony characterization biochemical reactions and then only subsequent serotyping should be done in absence of proper judgment of any of the stages it may not be concluded as positive salmonella in the product i am presenting here the general sources of errors in testing salmonella but this is purely based on on our experiences one is use of improper media or expired media number 2 temperature and time controls in all stages number 3 lack of proper care in examining the colony characteristics this often happens with pink colony and the pink media backgrounds concluding the presence merely based on examining the plates without confirmatory tests this is also often encountered and skipping of the vital tube test tsi and lia tests this is very essential for us and concluding without urease tests and other biochemical tests sometimes proteus is a very common interference especially in spices and is misinterpreted as salmonella this has to be ruled out by urease tests and then finally submitting the false positive culture test for serological and serotyping it may lead to some errors too these days there are many approved test kits that have come which are very reliable for salmonella detection these save time as well yet the conventional method presented here is followed in many laboratories these are all our experiences and from our routines i am sharing with you i shall come out with a more detailed presentation with videos on various tricking methods and other aspects thank you thank you friends for watching the video and all your cooperation please subscribe